Anybody in here saved by grace? Yeah. If you didn't get it by grace, you ain't got it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. It's the only way you're going to get it. That's right. Yeah. By grace. Anybody life been changed by grace? Yeah. yeah. Yes. A few of you? Mine has been. I, and I'm not ever going to get over it. I'm not going to quit talking about it. I'm not going to quit sharing about it. I'm not going to get to talking about something else. I'm not sharing with you about grace of something that I've read or heard somebody else talk about. I'm, I'm talking about grace that I'm living in and that I'm walking in and, and enjoying every day. I mean, it's it's just good. Ain't, ain't life good? Yeah. And so I, I just love it. And I'm convinced of this. If you're here tonight, if you're here, you're at least curious, or you're at least intrigued, or you're at least something. There's some little thought back there in the back of your mind thinking this question that, you know what, there's got to be, there's got to be more to this Christian life than just praying a prayer and suffering along and getting into heaven one minute. There's got to be more to God than that. There's got to be more to life than that. And so, anybody ever had that question? Let me tell you, there is more than that. There is life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't say, I've come so you could join a church somewhere and suffer along and be miserable and frown and grouchy and suffer along and write songs about, I can't wait to get to heaven and all this is over. There's more than that. There's life. And I'm, I'm not telling you about something I've read. I'm telling you about something I'm living in. I love it. I want some more of it. I'm going to write a song about that. <laughs> because it changed my life. Grace changed my life. And let me explain. I, there's a lot of new faces around. I, let me just explain a little bit. We believe that there's power in what you believe. And it's so much so. Uh, they say, Elvis talked about, we sang that song, Greatly Blessed, Highly Favored. You, we sang that on purpose. Because if you say that, you say that, you start believing that, there's power in what you believe. As the Prince calls it, uh, the power of right believing. What, whatever you're believing is what's happening in your life. Whatever you're believing is what's happening in your life. You can quote all kinds of fancy verses for it. You know, faith comes, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Let me tell you what that means. But whatever fruit you've got in your tree is because of what the root is. If you want to change the fruit that you've got, change the root. That's what you're believing. You're believing is what your root is. And so you start believing different. You start believing. You start believing. You start believing. Everything else around you starts to change. It don't, we've been told it comes by your self-effort. We've been told if you want things to change, you've got to... Dedicate your life and rededicate and start dressing different and acting different and talking different and, and doing all this stuff different and you know that'll work for a little while, but it'll wear out. Alright? Here, I just want to share this first week because maybe two, because I'm not over it yet. I, I shared this Sunday. If you was with me Sunday, don't worry, it'll be a little different, I'm sure, but but it won't hurt you to hear it again. Because I'm not over yet myself. I'll never get tired of this verse right here. If they take our Bibles away, they'll, they'll not take this verse out of me. I'll preach for the rest of my life every day with this one verse, all right? This one verse is life-changing. You ready? I'm, I'm, you all can just rest tonight because I believe this verse says, Romans 1.16, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is, it is the power of God. Amen. Some translations say, For I am confident. Has anybody got that one? I'm Paul's saying, I've got so much confidence in this gospel that, you know, he's saying, we've always heard it say, well, um, don't be ashamed of Jesus, you know, when you go to Walmart, you ought not to be ashamed of your faith and all that. He ain't even talking about that. That's condemnation. Clue with that mess. Hey, what he's saying, he's saying, I've got so much confidence in just believing in the gospel of grace. It is the power of God. The power of God. So you can just rest tonight. I've got, I'm just like, I'm like Paul. I've got so much confidence in the power of the gospel that faith comes by hearing. And just as a woman with the issue of blood, remember the woman with the issue of blood had, had an issue for 12 years and, and everything was against her, but it says this, after hearing 
about Jesus. After hearing about Jesus, she went against society, she went against the, the test results, she went against everything that was against her in life, and she went down there and got healed after hearing something. So I've got so much confidence that, that you can hear something tonight that you will forever be changed, that you just sit there and rest, and I'm going to do all the work for you, okay? You're just going to hear something, and you will leave here changed, all right? Fair enough? It's changed for the good, so don't be nervous, all right? I, I believe you can hear something tonight, and you will go out of here forever changed. I believe there's so much power in the gospel of grace that you can sit right here and hear it, and whatever devils and whatever things that are against you, whatever opposition you have that's snuck in here on you tonight, right now is shaking and right now is nervous because they know that I know that there's power in this gospel. Amen. It Amen. says, I'm not ashamed of this gospel of grace. It is the power of God. The power of God. Who'd like to have more power? Amen. Who'd like to have more power? Wouldn't you? Well, I'm going to tell you, it ain't in some 12 step program that you can send on TV, give $59.99. <laughs> it's free. Amen. And it's the gospel, the gospel of grace. And let, me, let me just qualify that again and explain to you, catch some of you up. We believe in grace around here. We believe in grace and grace alone. That's Jesus and Him crucified. Let me explain to you what grace is. Grace is all the good that God has for us. It's His love. It's His blessing. It's the position He, he, he paid for us to be sons and daughters. He's got everything that God has in heaven. We've been qualified for by grace. That means you don't deserve it. See, grace is getting the good that God gives us even though you don't deserve it. See, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. You hear me? You don't deserve it, but we get it anyway. That's grace. So we, we've been stumbled up so long because we've been so wrapped up in the thought that we have to deserve it or we have to try our best to deserve it or we keep working until we do deserve it. Then maybe we'll get it. That's not grace. When you realize that you've got God's grace on you because He loves you and it's not based on your performance, not based on whether you did right or wrong, it's a free gift to you because He loves you, you start living in that, that unlocks something inside of you. I'm telling you, that's the gospel right there. That He traded places with you. He took your wrong, He took your shame, He took your sin, He punished Jesus for all that you did and gave you life and gave you health and gave you the blessing and gave you the position. You see, that's grace. Yeah. You deserve it? No. Well, I'm telling you, that's the power of God right there. When you start hearing that and you start believing that, it unlocks something down inside of you. It's unexpressible. It's unexplainable. It changes everything. You, you, you'll so far surpass everything that you've ever tried to struggle to do in your life just by starting to believe something. Believe what's been placed down inside of you. I told the story before about the beagle. You remember the beagle? I said, you know, there's something in a beagle. God created something in a beagle. He's just born this way. He likes to chase rabbits, right? He's just a beagle. God created him. Something inside of him that he just craves rabbits. And so, uh, Grandpa and Grandson, they go out to the barn, you know, Grandpa had an old rabbit there, an old rabbit, or an old beagle. He'd jump a rabbit, you know, very Saturday morning, Grandpa and Grandson, you know. And so, old beagle, Grandpa's beagle, he'd jump a rabbit around the barn, you know, around the farm they'd go. So, just running, that beagle running that rabbit, I mean, it's like a, it's like a routine. They just love it. And that man, Grandpa, he just get the side cell hearing that, that beagle run that rabbit. You know, grand day having a big time. Well, that beagle run that rabbit, he's barking there. Before long, the neighbor's beagles, they can hear that beagle. They hear that beagle running that rabbit. So before long, the other, the neighbor's beagles are starting to come and join in. They hear, they hear the racket. They hear what's going on. Before long, beagles coming from all directions, joining in on this rabbit race. And they're going and, Man, and Grandpa, he just, he just can't hardly, he just, it's crying his life. Got grandson and beagles and running rabbits. I mean, it's the best thing he could even imagine. Well, round and round the farm they go. Before long, they go so long and start to get warmer. And a few of them beagles that come and join the race, they start to fall out a little bit. You know, laying over in the ditch, getting them a drink. And huh, they're exhausted. They ain't still going. Before long, more and more of them drop out. More and more of them dropping out. Before long, the, oh, the original beagle, the very first one, the one that's been running the longest, is the only one still running the rabbit. He's the only one. He's been running the longest, still running the rabbit, still going. All the others laid out with tongue hanging out. Grandson says, Grandpa, 
pure vehicle, he's been running along this and he's still going. He ain't no better shape than the rest of them, I know. How come it is that he's still running? Grandpa says, my vehicle saw the rabbit. When you see the rabbit, it's, it, it, it does something inside of you that, that God's placed in you. It's the gospel of grace. When you start believing that, when you get a taste of it, you see who He really is and how much He really loves you. I'm telling you, it unlocks something inside of you that He's placed in you, and you will run farther, run faster, do more, go far. You, you just it unlocks something by, by just seeing the rabbit. It's, it's that. <coughs> is there any beagles in here? I'm just going to show. I'm just going to show you the rabbit tonight, and you, you just turn you loose. Uh, you'll run. You'll run. That's it. You got to have a, a certain strategy teaching you how to run. No, you just see the beagle. God puts something in you that will turn you loose, and you you just go crazy. Run till your heart explodes, and you just eat up with rabbits, huh? All right. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation. For salvation. Now you know if you've been here more than once, you know we believe salvation means more than praying a prayer and getting your name written in a book and going to heaven one day. And then in between that time is a lot of gray area. No. Salvation means made whole. It means preserved, protected, healed. <coughs> Healed, I said. Protected. Made whole. Preserved. Hey, it's, it's redeemed. You've been placed back to the position that Adam was created to be in. Uh-oh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I, I have so much confidence in this gospel that, that when someone believes it, when someone, it says, it is the power of God for salvation. To everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. I believe there's power in a believer. See, that's what's happening here. We're becoming believers. I know you might have prayed a prayer when you were 12 and you've been saved and you're going to go to heaven, but I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about people that know something. That thing inside of them has been locked, unlocked. And when they go places, you ever seen them people? You ever been around them? You just you can't get enough of them and just sitting by them. You feel something. And when you're around them, they just something does something to you. There's some power about them. And, and you know, hey, I'm talking about believers. That's what's happening. We're becoming believers. We get more, we, we believe more every week. That's why I keep on telling you this message, the same message. We're believing. It's the power of God and the salvation for everyone who believes. Amen. I just want to be a believer. I'll tell you this. This little instance that happened to me, maybe partly the reason I ain't over this yet, but there's power in being a believer. There's power in what you believe. And when you believe, the power does the work. That's what faith is. Faith is doing the work. Faith is the evidence of what you believe. Amen. Amen. Man, I know guys probably get paid a lot of money to write books about that statement right there. Faith is the evidence of what you're believing. Yeah. Faith is, is bringing home everything that you believe. And so I, I, I'm telling you, that's why there's so much power that's so crucial that we believe. That we believe for God. Jesus said this, for him who believes, nothing is impossible. For him who believes. And so I, I thought about this. I had this instance where I come across met this lady and she had a, you know, she was older and all this stuff like normal older people get, you know, and so they just woe is me and this and that and so, you know, uh, all the things that older people struggle with and you know what, I I, I, I don't I'm just Jason and I'm sorry, I'm I'm not sorry, but I'm just I can't just I don't know. I just believe the curse has been broken. And if I believe the curse has been broken, if I believe that our sin is gone, and if I believe that, that what He did on the cross, if, if I believe that our position has changed, if I believe all that, then how come we're tolerating it? If we believe all that, how come we're putting up with it? If we believe all that, how come we just keep on living in it and sweeping it under the rug and saying, oh, well, you know. I, I, I refuse to be that way anymore. Now, and sometimes I might get accused of being uh, 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 mean or cold or un, 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 what's the word I'm trying to say? Unsensitive. 
You know what? That's okay. But I'm not tolerating the stuff that's anti-gospel anymore. And so here's this lady is. She's a believer. She's a Christian. She's going to die and go to heaven one day. But she also needs the real gospel and know the truth of who she really is and what she doesn't have to put up with. So I got all this stuff that get on old people. You know, oh, well, I'm so old. Well, I got this and I got this and, you know, dementia and this and, you know, all this stuff that people struggle with. Anybody here? Anybody who got these struggles and this stuff or know somebody does? Yeah, well, we, we just pat them on the hands and say, bless your heart. Oh, you know. Who with that? That's right. right. Amen. With that. And so I said, you know, everybody else, I'm, I'm going to love somebody enough. Jesus loved people enough to talk straight to them. I'm going to love them enough that I'm not just going to pat you in and say, oh, you poor little thing. No, I'm going to say, hey, is the gospel true or is it not true? Is the curse broken or is it not broken? Is, is your sin gone? Did, you, see, you see, God is Come just on. and a fair God. If he punished Jesus for all your wrong, he's not punishing you. Right. If he punished Jesus for all your wrong and then came along and punished you for the same wrong, what kind of God would that be? God is not that way. He punished Jesus. He's not punishing you. He can't punish you. Well. And so we might as well determine it ain't God. And if it ain't God, then it's anti-gospel and it's up to us to either put up with it or not put up with it. And so I just started sharing the gospel. I, I didn't even share it. I just said it. I wasn't even talking to the lady, really. I was talking because there's so much power in this gospel that it's spiritual. That's right. You heard me talk about last week, the seen and the unseen. You see, that's why you can sit here and rest tonight because I'm dealing with stuff in the spirit. You may not even be aware of it. There's going to be things fall off of you tonight that you didn't even know you had. Because I know that there's power in this gospel. And there's power in this proclaiming and saying, I started saying, I wasn't even talking to this lady really or at her or what. I don't know. I just started saying, hey, I'm a believer and I know that the gospel's true and I know that the curse is broken and I know that we've been redeemed and I know that I've been put back in the place that Adam was in. I know that I've got something inside of me and I'm not putting up with this and I'm not putting up with that and I'm not putting up with all this mess that the Lord said And I'm just, you can ask Sarah, she was there. It was like a light switch went off. Her, her mind was right. It was just like when she was 40 years old in it. She never repeated herself, never could not hear me anymore. None of this stuff was there. It, it was just like, boom. Where'd it go? You know why? Because there's power in this gospel for salvation to everyone who believes. And if you'll unlock that thing down inside of you, I'm telling you, you got something inside of you. I'm telling you, He Amen. paid a big price to live inside of you. Quit putting yourself down. You are high rent, high district piece of property. God Amen. Himself lives inside of you. And if you'll Amen. unlock that thing, you'll know that it's... You, you, you just become a believer and the devil starts shaking and stuff starts happening around you. You see, I'm just, I'm not telling you nothing you ain't never heard. I'm just preaching the gospel. And when I preach the gospel, I've got so much confidence in it that things are happening right now. It's spiritual. You don't have to see it. You don't have to understand it. It's happening in the spiritual realm. Bodies are being healed. Minds are being renewed. Marriages are being fixed. Finances are being released. I'm telling you, there's something happening. I believe that. I believe that when a believer shows up, something's supposed to happen. Amen. Is there any believers in him? Yeah. Is there power in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Yeah. Him crucified. It's grace. I'm telling you, the devil would love for us to spend our time trying to deserve it and trying to earn it and trying to do all this and be good enough to get it. You'll waste your whole life with that mess. Quit trying to deserve it. Quit trying to worry whether you deserve it or not or whether you can earn it or not. You can't. Quit worrying about it. Just start living in it. Amen. Amen. You'll outrun every beagle that's out there trying to work on their behavior and write gospel songs and every kind of other mess that we can come up with. You just start believing in the gospel and you take it everywhere you go. You take it to work with you. You take it to school with you. You take it everywhere. Hey, I, I seen a man healed in the gym this week. You know what? I, just because I refuse to not be a believer. If I believe the thing's true, then let's live in it. Amen. If it ain't true, then just be quiet and go home. Amen. There you go. I'm tired of this wishy-washy, mess up old religion crud that's got God a bad name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. 
I'm feeling myself. telling you right now, there's power in believing the gospel. Amen. I'm telling you, lives will change by believing the gospel. They can come up with nine doctrines of whatever else that they want to and spend all their days doing that if they want to. Me, I'm just going to continue to believe that Jesus lives inside me. He's bigger than anything I come across and everything that unqualified me has been taken away. That Amen. makes me a son of God, filled with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God in His hand. Now what in the world? can come against us. What in the world could, could ever show up around us and not be defeated? Nothing. Oh, the devil better look out. There's some believers coming. Amen. No matter who sings. I'm just a believer, and I'm standing here proclaiming. You know, you guys know how much I believe in love in the communion, right? You know that something happens spiritually during communion. That we, we, we've missed a bunch of that for all this time. But now we've started believing in, in, in learning what really happens in the communion. That's spiritual. Do you know that Paul said that when, when you take communion, you're proclaiming his death? We see people get healed with communion. We've seen lives get changed with communion. You know why? Because you're proclaiming the gospel. There is power in proclaiming the gospel. There is the power. It is, the Bible said. I read it. It is the power of God. Amen. You just proclaim it. You don't have to figure it out. I didn't know all the chemical imbalances and all the stuff that had to do with that. All that, no, I didn't know nothing. Just proclaim the gospel. Paul said, I have this, I have so much confidence. If somebody will just be silly enough and humble enough to say, I don't have to have 12 titles and all this stuff. I just have to proclaim the gospel because I believe it to be the truth. It is the power of God. Amen. Amen. You want to see something happen in your life? Take communion. Or pro just proclaim it. Just say it. Not everybody gets to be the preacher. Not everybody gets to stay and tell it all the time like I do. There's lots of ways to tell it. Right. First, live in it. Yes. I, I just believe I got so much confidence in it that lives have changed tonight just because somebody in and prayed to say it's the simplicity of the gospel. That's why Paul said, I'm not ashamed. He wasn't saying, he wasn't having to say, I'm, because don't be ashamed of Jesus, you know. When, when you're one of them Christians, you got to be a Christian all the time, you know. He wasn't saying that. Oh, you got to share your faith in Walmart and all that. Don't be embarrassed now. He wasn't saying that. You know, he's, not, he, he's writing this letter to Rome. They, they esteem themselves as highly educated. I mean, they had... Really, they had high confidence in their in their uh, intelligence, and all. You know, all, he's writing a letter to those guys. Look, he's saying, "Look, I'm not ashamed." Right. That's something this simple Amen. is the answer to everything that we can be up with in life. I'm not ashamed. I have so much confidence that you believing in the grace of God, knowing that you have everything that God has for you because of Jesus, and not because you deserve it, just by believing that simplicity of believing that you can be born again. You got born wrong the first time. You got born right the second time. You get born again. You, you become a believer and you're made right with God. Read Romans 3. You've been made right. Let me finish. Alright? Romans 1. 16. Let me finish with this. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it. For in it. In what? The gospel. the gospel. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. Live by faith. That means by believing. That means by believing that the gospel made you righteous 
apart from your behavior and your performance. Amen. If you can believe tonight that you've been, that right there sitting in your seat, I don't care if you're drunk or high or whatever else you got going on, I don't care right now. Listen to them CDs, watch it on YouTube or live or whatever else. I don't care what kind of mess you're in. If you believe the gospel that God in His love made you righteous. That's why you got to believe this by faith because you ain't got proof for it. You ain't got proof for it. You believe by faith that God Himself made you righteous. It'll change your life forever. I guarantee you. Try it. Trust me. Taste it. See. Get you some of it, alright? All right. Love you. Thank you. 